If you have ever been victimized by the stinging nettle while on a hike or working in the garden, today I'm going to show you how you can extract revenge and transform this plant into a powerful fertilizer that's going to help you grow juicy tomatoes, fat beans, and girthy gourds. And maybe by the end of this video, I can convince you to actually grow this in your garden on purpose. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Christina with Forever Food Forest, a channel where I explore ways of growing food without the use of herbicides, pesticides, or commercial fertilizers. Stinging nettles are a nutrient powerhouse that a lot of times due to their stinging nature, get a bad rap. And that's mostly because they are covered in tiny little hairs that release formic acid when you rub up against them. Formic acid is known to cause skin irritation, but the difference between a cure and a poison is the dose. And some people swear that purposely stinging themselves with the nettles relieves arthritis and joint pain. I'm one of those people but this is not medical advice it's a gardening channel and when you see a plant in nature with such a strong defense mechanism you know it's got to be hiding something good and it does stinging nettles are full of micronutrients and trace minerals such as cobalt molybdenum selenium and sulfur all necessary for proper functioning of the cells and unless you want to spend big bucks you're not going to find these trace minerals in commercial fertilizers. Now I know someone in the comments is going to say lime is an excellent source of molybdenum and while yes there's a lot of molybdenum in lime unless you know how to treat it to make it bioavailable for plants a lot of the molybdenum is going to stay trapped in the soil. What makes today's fertilizer recipe unique is that we will be using a water extraction which means that all the nutrients that we extract will be water soluble and therefore and therefore ready to be taken up by plants. Now you might be thinking, I don't need to use fertilizer. I use homemade compost. If you want to grow big, fat, juicy tomatoes and lots of them, you absolutely need to increase the nutrients in your growing medium. You're probably wondering, where can I find nettles for my homemade fertilizer? Well, the good news is they grow like weeds. Sure, you can order seeds and grow them yourself. That's one option, but a better option would be to go forage for them in the wilds. You can find them in open fields, shady forests, and most often along riverbanks. They do like that moist, damp soil. If you live in a temperate climate, stinging nettles are usually the first thing to emerge in the spring. So right now is the perfect time to go looking for them. If you are looking for them in the wild, you want to look for heart-shaped leaves with jagged edges and stems that are covered in tiny hairs. The truth is they are probably going to catch your attention long before you see them because of that sting. But if you don't want to walk around and rub up on every plant that you see, look for nettles in patches because they spread through underground rhizomes and it is very rare that you will just see one single plant. Okay, perhaps wearing shorts to uh, do some nettle harvesting was a poor fashion choice. There is a saying that goes, a nettle will not sting an honest person. Okay, fine. I made that up. Now, some people believe that the stinging is good for you. Helps with arthritis. Now, I don't have arthritis, but maybe that's why. an honest person. How many nettles do you need? A bucket full. There is a raccoon on the tree?
Let me see. This raccoon on a tree. Oh, she's coming down. There she is. Hi, baby. Look at those feet. Look at those feet. Hi, Mama. Where are your babies? That's the Mama. You're waking up, huh? Did you get a good nap in the in the pathos? You had a good sleep? You get enough rest, mama. I think I think that's Tisha. I think so. I was wrong. That's a boy raccoon. That is not a mama. He is definitely a father of at least half a dozen. Uh, raccoons here and apparently he got himself a penthouse suite on the old oak where are your babies big papa oh my he is playing it up for the camera look at this raccoon just look at him You are such a show off, Tish. You are such a show off. What? What? What are you saying? Get out of here. Yeah, that's Tisha. He fakes being injured for attention. Oh, I'm so feeble. Someone call an ambulance. But not for me. Don't let him fool you. Now that my bucket is full of nettles, I'm just going to press it down and see how many we got. Okay, so that's a pretty good amount. We do want to have a little bit of room at the top to, uh, to cover this with water. When collecting my plant material, I want to use about one part nettles to two parts water. Now keep in mind as you're stuffing your nettles in your bucket or whatever vessel you choose, there are going to be air pockets. So that's why I always err on the caution of having a little bit more than half. And now we let it ferment for about a week. Now ideally you do want to use living water, something like rainwater or water from a stream. However, we have been in a drought for over a month, so I'm using tap water. And then I just place it outside in a shaded spot. So in the middle of filming this video, it started raining, which it hasn't rained for the last six weeks. And then if you've seen my last week's video, uh, Florida ma'am did a rain dance. And I don't know if God was happy or angry because we got hail. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. But uh, I'm committed to posting this video on Monday for you guys. So I'll just work with the rain. It's actually kind of nice out. So it has been about three days. Let's take a look at our concoction. Doesn't smell as bad as I thought it would. Oh no, there it is. <coughs> Takes a minute for it to hit ya. So let's talk about the smell. The smell is caused by anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria can be neutralized by installing a fishing tank pump and introducing oxygen. If you're planning on storing this fertilizer for a really long time, I would recommend straining out the solids and storing just the liquid. I make it in such batches that it is used up in about a month because what happens is if it 
is allowed to continue to ferment. It changes the pH from acidic to alkaline. And depending on the plants, the difference in pH could affect the nutrient absorption. To use the fertilizer, you will need to dilute it. And I like to dilute it uh, at a rate of one part fertilizer to 10 parts water. Right here I have approximately six liters of rain harvested water. And we're gonna add 600 milliliters of fertilizer. We'll get 600 milliliters of sludge. Look at that color. A little bit more. Okay, and that's 600. So it just finished raining. Let's go give these little guys a little nutrient boost. Now, you don't have to use a sprayer like I'm using. You can use a watering can or you can also use it as a soil drench. Now, if you plan on using a sprayer like this, make sure that you run this fertilizer through a very fine mesh to get rid of any solids. Otherwise, it will clog the line. I'm gonna cover this to keep the flies out. Honestly, that maybe I got used to the smell, but it's not that bad. I have another video where I made a fertilizer using different types of weeds, and that was foul. This, mildly pleasant. Mildly. Raccoon, you came down from your tree again. All right, who wants fertilizer? Raise your plants. Tomato, you want some? Okay, I see you, corn. Onions, you got it. Beans, oh. Nettle fertilizer is excellent for beans because it has all the nutrients that they need in order to fix nitrogen from the air. This is heavy. Gourds, look at those fat gourds. I grow some fat gourds over here. Peach tree, I have not forgotten about you. Drink up, baby. Now, if you want to look up the stinging nettle's full nutritional profile, there is an amazing database called Dr. Duke's uh, Phytochemical and Ethnobotanical Database. I'll link it down below. You can look up all the mineral contents of stinging nettles, catnip, comfrey, pretty much any plant that you can think of, and it will give you a whole breakdown of the nutrient availability, which is kind of cool. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this one was informative. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Subscribe if you're new. Fat Wild Florida Man will be back in the next video. And until next time, feed your plants.